What's going on, all you wild ghouls out there? It's your two favorite horror enthusiasts back here for Cinefells. I'm Logan Myers, my good mate over there. And I am Henry Hill, and tonight we are talking about the third season of the Shudder show that is now streaming on Shudder. I believe it also airs on AMC+. I'm talking about the third season of Creep Show. And that's right, these two wild horror enthusiasts love Creep Show. We've reviewed every season of this, love the original films, you know, Romero, Stephen King. And you got Greg Nicotero, the makeup mastermind behind Creep Show and bringing this to a TV uh, series, anthology series. And each season it dives in, into different tales based out of the comic. It comes alive. And usually there's two stories per episode. And um, season three, we have six episodes with two per episode. So it's pretty interesting. You got a lot of people known in the horror business, directing behind, you know, making the episode. So it's really interesting. And it uh, pays homage to a lot of old horror films, obviously in the 1950s. It's a fun anthology show and the episodes really fly by. And with it being only six episodes, it's a really easy binge. Um, I finished it within a couple days and I enjoyed it for the most part. Um, my favorite episode of the season, uh, episode two, and the first uh, part of episode two called Skeletons in the Closet. That one starred uh, James Ramar and involved like a, a movie buff having a museum with a bunch of cool horror props. Um, you know, it had like skeletons and it had things from other horror movies, even like uh, what do they have? They had like the Jason mask. I think I saw maybe the Necronomicon. The little, yeah, Leatherface. Uh, you had the chainsaw and some other That's stuff right. like Texas Chainsaw. Yeah. Phantasm. It's the ball. The ball. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it, it comes out. So a bunch of cool like props from like big horror movies. Yeah. And you find out that the owner is kind of killing people <laughs> uh, for the props along the way. Um, some of the skeletons there are from real bodies. <laughs> and uh, eventually James Ramar comes in. He's a, you know, fellow uh, enthusiast, movie memorabilia and all that. And he ends up getting killed <laughs> and ends up, you know, they throw his body in a vat of acid, basically melt him, and then he becomes a prop at the show. Well, eventually, after they kill these people, you know, the, the props start coming to life, the skeletons, uh, to enact some revenge against this uh, this guy, the owner. Unknown actors in this anthology series, uh, but some familiar faces along the way, too. Um, you know, obviously, a lot of homage, like you mentioned, to George Romero, Stephen King, and other horror movies along the way. You see... A lot of, uh, you know, directors, up and coming directors directing these episodes and some some interesting episodes here. A couple of ones that, uh, you know, I didn't care too much for about it was about 50 50 for me. Felt like half the episodes were really strong and the other half were just, you know, so so. But, uh, you know, I had a great time with this series. This is great for horror fans like us. You know, it's reminds me of the old days watching, you know, the creep show movies one and two. It feels like that, but in the TV format, they really give a opportunity for these up and coming actors to uh, do these, you know, campy, you know, B movie kind of, um, you know, episodes. And they're all fun, you know, and the creep back there shows up in a lot of them and sets the stage. They show the comic book flipping the pages and show the artwork and stuff that reminds you of the original comic book and the the original movie yeah for sure it's a love letter to horror you know especially george romero too and nick and Terrell working with him starting his career with romero writing a love letter you know with each season you know making all these different episodes of different tales you know it's love for like the 1950s comics and just really horror fans in general bringing practical effects back to the glory days that's the, the best part yeah and that's the best the part yeah how much work they put into the makeup and the blood and the limbs and everything they do in this. It's so believable. And that's what I lo always loved about horror, especially back then is it looked real. And that's what, you know, brings you in as an audience. It scares the shit out of you. And they really pull that off in these six episodes. I thought the first two and the last two were probably my favorites. Um, there's an episode, I think it was episode five, kind of like the apocalypse. And, oh uh, yeah. All the people are like kind of like deadites and it reminded me of Raimi, you know, evil dead. And I thought that yeah. episode was awesome. Everything they did with the practical and that was really well done. The first episode with Ethan Embry from you know, all the nineties movies and uh, yes. was a can't hardly wait. He played like this drunk, you know, ex-husband kind of guy. And it has to do with this lady and what happens to her. And it reminded me much of the first creep show movie with the Stephen King story and that. So I think they're paying right. homage to that. So yeah, there's a lot of great episodes in this. So the only complaint for me is I wanted more. 
you know, maybe four more episodes and yeah. another season. You know, being a great, you know, I'm a huge horror fan and, and seeing Nick Otero and all these people involved in horror making this TV show for us, the fans, you know, I, I just love it. And I just want more. So that's my only complaint. I don't have too many complaints. I mean, a couple of the episodes I was bored with, but overall, you know, keeping up uh, with the tone of the previous seasons in the movie, they do a great job of that. And yeah, like you mentioned, there's a couple of really standout episodes. The one I mentioned and the one you mentioned was really well done. And they tried different things this year too. They tried to uh, do an animated episode, which was different. And they, you know, really uh, did an homage to like the fifties with the whole uh, episode with the spiders. It felt like something that would have been done back in the day, you know, like yep. an old kind of fifties kind of horror. So they do a lot of different things here. And I, I respect that. And it gives a lot of these filmmakers a chance to uh, shine and the practical effects. It's all about the practical effects. Like you mentioned, a lot of these people that, uh, you know, work on the show, obviously Greg Nicotero working on the show, He's involved and, you know, he has a lot of people, you know, show what they can do. And a lot of people that worked on this show and the, uh, you know, the effects and practical effects department are going to go on to do, you know, more horror from here. So it's really a, a great place for up and coming talent to work on these episodes and then go on to have great careers later in horror. So, yeah, I had a great time with a uh, third season of creep show yeah speaking of the animated episode, that's called the things in Oakwood's past. And that was voiced by. Luke Skywalker himself, Mark Hamill, and then you had Danielle Harris, Danielle Harris from Halloween, voicing the characters, and that that was pretty cool. You know, it's just like a cool animated horror story, which was fun. And I thought the voiceovers were obviously cool. You have Joker voicing the character, Mark Hamill, so yeah. pretty pretty awesome. They got some big players in this, like I was saying, a lot of people in horror. So overall, very satisfied. I can't wait for the next season. Hopefully, they agree that I haven't heard anything, but I'm hoping for more. I want like ten seasons of this. And, uh, to pick up for the home collection. So with that being said, I'm going to give season three of Creep Show that's streaming on Shudder, good friends over at Shudder, I'm going to give it a four out of five Greg Nicotero hair pieces. I'm going to give the third season of Creep Show a three and a half out of five Michael Rooker hair pieces. Oh, hey there. It's your old Uncle Merle. I loved when he showed up. He's another big name that showed up that we uh, didn't mention. Yeah, they got some good talent this year. Can't wait to see it pick up in season four. Hopefully we get that this year. Hopefully they're already shooting it. They didn't really make any announcements that I saw anyway, but I, I mean, they didn't, I haven't seen a cancel announcement either. So I assume that they're, uh, you know, making it and it's going to come out this year. With that being said, we're interested from hearing all you wild ghouls out there. What did you like about season three of Creep Show? What didn't you like about it? What's your favorite season? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to click subscribe subscribe also check out these wild ghouls on facebook twitter and instagram and our website cinefells.com for the latest greatest tv movie news and reviews Ooh, it's starting off a creepy january here we're already <laughs> getting into the horror it's you know the first week of the year these boys love their horror we didn't get enough back in october we're starting off right there's already some horror on the way coming out with uh, megan's coming out this week then we're going to have another Scream movie this year. There's a lot of horror movies coming out, uh, a lot of them to look forward to. Even some video games um, with the Killer Clowns from Outer Space game coming out. Yes. And Texas, Texas Chainsaw Jason. Massacre, which I can't wait to see. I hope that's amazing. That would be a fun world to play in. Uh, so we can't wait. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning into our review of Creep Show Season 3. We will hopefully be back later on in the year to review the new season of Creep Show. So until the next time. I'm Uncle Henry. I'm Uncle Logan Myers signing out until the next TV review. Cheers! Cheers!